I'm the best, so do not test the top of my profession. The master of my chosen field, of that there is no question. Take the time to listen to what I have to say. So what I have to so say. Hi, my name is Patrick Pals and welcome to another one of my lectures on the criteria for success at tennis. Now one of the most important criteria, guys and girls, is to learn how to coach yourself. Where do you go when you need a good tennis coach? You must learn to go to yourself. Now way back in the day, I think around 1987, while playing tennis on the coast of El Sol in Spain, I picked up a book by Peter Burwash called Tennis for Life. Of course, those were in the days where there was no internet, there was no cell phones. The only way to get information really was either on the television or uh, books. And this book was called Tennis for Life. Now, I really love the name of that book, Tennis for Life, and right now, it is the first advice I would give you, is that you start to look at your tennis right now as playing it for the rest of your life. The reason that that is so good is because it gives you a longer time span to look at getting better at tennis. I find that far too many players are in way too much of a rush to try and get better at tennis. They're hurrying everything, they're rushing everything. They're not slowing down and thinking and doing things in a fluid motion. They're rushing through everything. And also remember guys, your brain. Your brain will only remember about 20% of what you are taught. If you take a tennis lesson, and let's say it's a 60-minute tennis lesson, in two days, the most you remember about that tennis lesson is about 20% of the lesson. So one of the things I developed over the years was the Spanish idea of poco poco. It meant little by little. And the beauty of learning tennis little by little is you literally don't forget it. Learning it all at once and you're going to forget 80% of it. So poco poco is a much better way to learn how to play tennis. You see, right now, you're not learning how to play tennis better every day. You're plateaued out. You're just playing the same way you played yesterday, the day before, you'll be playing the same way tomorrow because you're not trying to get better a little bit at a time. You're trying to hit the ball as hard as you can. You're running around the court as hard as you can. You're just doing the exact same thing all the time without, during a match, trying to actually play at a much more even pace and trying to get better. Now the second part I really loved about Peter Burwash's book was the idea of where do you go when you need a good tennis coach you must learn to go to yourself. Now, Peter based it on the idea that tennis is unique in most sports in that when a match actually begins, there's no coaching. You see, a golfer has his caddy, a boxer has his corner man, but a tennis player, you can be in a five-hour marathon at Wimbledon, no one is allowed to coach you. So hence, where do you go when you need a good tennis coach? You have to learn to go to yourself. Now this is my reason also of why I've always been so big on coaching myself and that is because nobody else cares. You see guys and girls, the only person on this planet that truly gives a damn about your tennis playing is you. In fact, the only way you can ever get anyone to even pretend like they're interested in your tennis is if you pay them. Stop paying them and you're going to find out exactly how interested they are. But it's not such a bad thing that you're the only person interested in your tennis because you are the only person 
who can actually coach yourself to be a better tennis player. You see, I can't do the studying it's going to take for you to become a better tennis player. I can't do the endless practicing and I definitely can't do your thinking on the tennis court. All of those things are 100% up to you and that is why it is a very powerful thing for you to start taking 100% charge of your tennis lessons. Even with me, guys and girls, the sooner you can be rid of me, the sooner you can learn what I have to teach you and then be able to go on to start coaching yourself, the better. Although it will take quite a bit of time, but your object is to try and coach yourself. I do it all the time guys. I haven't had a tennis lesson in over 40 years. But that doesn't mean I haven't been learning about tennis all the way or along the route. I have been constantly studying tennis, constantly analyzing my tennis, constantly practicing and constantly playing tennis. But I've always been looking at whatever way I can improve my tennis. And I always do it guys and girls, bit by bit, just a little bit, each day. See, the thing you want to learn to do is never, ever, ever compare yourself to any other tennis player. Just compare yourself to the tennis player that you were yesterday. And, at the end of the day, try and be a slightly better tennis player than you were yesterday. When you learn about tennis, just learn a little bit at a time. That way you won't forget it. Then go out and practice what you've learned. After that, learn a bit more. And so on and so on. And if you take the concept that you're going to be playing this game for the rest of your life, if you just learn a little bit every day, over time, you're going to know a lot. It's sort of like putting a little bit of money in the bank to start with. You're not going to hardly get any interest, but as long as you keep putting in more money, more money and more money, sooner or later the interest starts to grow. And it's the same thing with tennis. The more you learn, the more you learn, the more you learn, the better you're going to get. Now also remember that all of the studies in the last 30 years indicate that the best criteria for success at tennis are IQ and conscientiousness. So as you are learning bit by bit by bit, you are actually increasing your tennis IQ. And the conscientiousness, guys, really comes into don't try and go out and learn everything in a day, in a week, in a month. It takes years and years to learn how to be a good tennis player. So be conscientious in the, in the idea that you're going to go out and try and get better bit by bit by bit. But you're not going to stop. You're not going to all of a sudden say, well, I've reached the peak of my tennis, because nobody reaches the peak of their tennis. There's always more to learn, and there's always a bit better that you can get. And that's the object of this guy, things, guys. Now, I've also set up this tennis channel so that I can give you all the materials, all the ideas, all the concepts that you will need so that you can actually coach yourself. But as I say, you want to watch these criterias, you want to learn these criterias, you want to learn all the mechanics of how to hit a forehand, a backhand, a service, an overhead, a volley. But at the same time, you want to also be looking to coaching yourself. Remember, when you're on the tennis courts, think I can't be there to think for you, so you're going to have to develop your own tennis brain. When you're practicing all alone, you've got to coach yourself. There won't be a coach there. And remember, in a one-hour tennis lesson, you're going to remember only 20% of it in two days. So one of the most important things to remember is what Socrates said. There's no knowledge without remembering. So you can learn everything you want today, but in two days you don't remember it. What good is it? So that is why, guys, I emphasize learning bit by bit.
little by little, not giant big leaps. It's like the Chinese say, the longest journey begins with the first step. And you're just going to start taking little steps, little steps, little steps, until you get to where you want to go, and that is a much better tennis player than you are now. But what time it takes, guys, is what time it takes. Now, the conscientiousness part is just not to give up. And don't measure yourself against other players. Just see yourself slowly getting better, not in a big rush, bit by bit, and within a short period of time, you're going to find that you're a much better tennis player than you were a month ago, a year ago. The time element, guys, is so important to understand that it doesn't matter how long it takes. On average, they say it takes seven years for you to become a fairly good tennis player. Not seven weeks, not seven months, seven years. But think of how much you can learn if every one of those days during that seven years you learned a little bit. And remember those little bits you remember. Serious